Hey guys, JC Smith here. Uh, some of you probably saw the last video I did, or one of the last ones, of uh, removing the dump bed from my little International 4700. So it is now off, and I had plans on putting it on the 2002 International 4700 little railroad truck that I bought. It was a T444E with a six plus one spicer and air brake. The cab to axle was perfect. It was 84, just like what I needed. However, um, a buddy of mine is a uh, heavy equipment mechanic and he has an, a uh, newer Freightliner with a uh, Mercedes diesel in it. And um, he came across it because the truck was right, but he didn't want the Mercedes diesel. He really wanted to have a Cummins or a Cat or something else, but the price was right for the whole setup. So he bought the truck, ran it for a while, and of course the Mercedes diesel engine let loose. So he's without a truck. Now he's got a wife and three little kids, so he can't work without a truck. So um, he has taken my little railroad truck that was kind of set up like a service truck already, put his tools on it, um, we put plates on it and insurance, and he's using that truck until he can come up with some money to do the Caterpillar swap over or Cummins. Uh, he would like to put an ISM Cummins in it, but it's going to take a lot of wiring, a lot of extra work. Uh, as far as I know, I've never seen that uh, Freightliner he has come through with a Cummins in it. So he may have to do Caterpillar, but it is what it is. So he's going to use my truck in the meantime. So what that means to me is I still need a dump truck. So I don't have that railroad truck to put that on right now. So, and I've got some things coming up that I need this dump bed for. Just like the other day we went and hauled wood, firewood, them big slab chunks and big blocks that we get from the Amish, and I put it on another truck. So let me show you what we're doing and, and what the temporary fix is going to be. So, hold on. Well guys, it's time to fuel up the uh, redneck dump truck. took my dump truck apart. I need to go pick up some wood today, so I just settled on this little cabin chassis. But I need to get some fuel. She was a little bit low. Look at this. I just replaced these. They've already got rust on them. Copper color just to make you feel like they're going to last. So, wind this back up. I'll wash my hands once I'm done with the diesel fuel yeah so we needed a dump truck to pick up some of them slab cutoffs they're the big chunks and I want them for the, the shop and the Amish guys called us and told us that uh, he has another load ready for me so seeing as I already took the dump truck apart and I don't really have the dump truck back together I guess this is what's going to be our dump truck. Man, we've never even cleaned this truck. I know, it's gross. It's kind of gross. But, anyways, 6 plus 1 with a DT 466. Air brakes. Let's get her on down the road and get, a, get us some wood. We like going to get wood. Of course, this is wood for the workshop, or for the garage, I mean. Keep me warm this winter. So, let's get moving. Okay, so some of you may recognize this. This is a truck I bought for parts. This is an O2 International 4300 DT 466 Spicer 6 Plus 1 on air brakes. Um, this truck's pretty rusty, and especially in the back part of the frame, back around the rear wheels, uh, it's thin in spots and whatever, but uh, we're going to make this our temporary dump truck. So here's what we're going to do. Um, now, ideally, I would want on the back of the cab to the center of this axle to be 84 inches okay um, but in doing that in this truck that requires me taking the drive shaft which from the front of the yoke up to here is not long enough to be 84 cab to axle unfortunately it brings it right about here well I don't want that little stubby shaft like that and I don't want to rebuild the whole entire drive shaft for a temporary dump truck. 
So instead of going with the industry standard 84 cab axle, what I'm going to do from the center of the rear axle to up here on the hub face is 72 inches. Okay? So what we have here is 72 cab to axle, and then this is what it would be if I used the original drive shaft, moved the axle forward, and put the yoke on the back of the transmission. So it puts it ex just about a foot farther forward than I like. This is where I would like it to be. This is where it will end up. Now, there's two reasons this is acceptable to me. First off, that's a 20,000 pound rear axle, 32,000 GVW truck. The bed is probably going to come in at about a couple thousand pounds, and you figure with the rear end and the frame, on the rear end with just the dump truck and nothing on it is probably no more than five or six thousand pounds. So, that being said, it leaves 15,000 pounds of capacity on that axle plus what would go on the front axle. So, my thoughts are, if I do what I'm thinking about doing, and I just use that drive shaft, it works out that these holes here are already drilled, the space is correct, and these three holes are already drilled, and this spacing is correct for the front leaf spring hanger. So that saves me several things. That's 12 holes, because there's six here and six on the other side, that I don't have to drill. It gives me my alignment for my rear end so it's not cocked or anything. It's, it's exactly perfect, because we've checked these against front mounts and on the rear mounts to make sure they're square. And then I don't have to cut the drive shaft or have it remade. I would prefer to set it at 84 inches cab to axle. That, it's, it would be a much more capable dump truck. Because then, when I cut the frame here, which would be a 10 foot cab to axle, I, I could put a 3 quarter, 5 eighths, 3 quarter plate back here and haul a pretty heavy trailer and still have good capacity and not be overloaded on the rear axle. But I also have to realize that this is temporary. In my mind, it's temporary. In reality, it may not be. It may be, you know, something that's around for a long time like this. So, two things here. By doing it, I'm saving having to have that drive shaft built and my alignment holes are right. And then there's another thing that's kind of a bonus. If I do decide to pull this bed back off, being that though this is 72 cab to axle, I have a wrecker bed at home that is 72 cab to axle, which is really weird. And I could easily set that bed on this truck and then have a medium duty wrecker. So there's a lot of reasons this works. I don't normally like doing this, but in this case, this is faster, it's simpler, and it gets me done, and I can get my um, dump bed on it much faster. So that's where we're headed. That's what I think we're going to do. So the first step is going to be to take the drive shafts out. We'll start with the rear, take it apart here, and then we'll take next section here. We'll just take the uh, carrier bearing loose from the cross member right here. Take this loose, do the same thing up here. We'll drop that drive shaft out, take this loose, take loose the transmission, set all the drive shafts aside. Then the next thing would be to huck, cut the huck, huck bolts here on both sides, get this cross member all loosened up, and then work on the framing. I will take the rear cross member out completely, and once I have all my mounts, leaf spring mounts, taken loose, um, We'll spread this frame just a little bit with a pipe or a port of power or a bottle jack or something so that we can slide the axle forward. Now, normally I would take these airlines loose, fish them back through these cross members. Um, these are old. I don't know how well these are going to come apart. If they come apart, that's what I'm going to do if it's not an issue. Um, if they don't, I'll probably, for right now, these are scrap metal. Well, let me stop there because I, I know I'm not going to do that. I was going to say I'd, I'd slice them and pull my my uh, tubing out, but my airlines. But 
you guys know as well as I do, I'm not going to do that. I'll save them, set them aside in case we need them for something else. Um, anyways, we'll take this loose. We'll get it all moved forward and uh, go from there. So that's where we're at. That's where we're heading. I know this is a crusty frame, but um, I've knocked all the crap off of it, and I've started pressure washing it, trying to get all the loose stuff off, and we'll give it the best treatment we can. It just has to make it through the winter. Um, I've got some projects going on, some things I need a dump truck for, so this is going to be it. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to crawl underneath here, take the PTO plate off the transmission, and be sure there's a gear in there. Uh, a lot of times these aren't. This was not a fleet ordered truck. This was not ordered by Penske or Ryder or uh, Budget or any of those rental companies. So it should have a PTO gear, but first is first. I'll take that plate off, look inside there, and make sure there's a gear. All right, we'll bring you along. Well, as you can see, the PTO gear is there. So that's a good thing. We can move forward, and uh, I will uh, take the serial number, call the uh, Spicer dealer, and find out what fluid it needs. It says it takes synthetic, but it doesn't say exactly which synthetic, so I'll have to figure that out. And this is... Uh, this is a reman transmission, which I'm not surprised by that because this thing, the shift pattern is very tight and uh, the gears are very, very new feeling. So I wasn't surprised by that at all. But uh, anyhow, I'll go find out what we need. And uh, there's a tag on the side of this with a serial number, so that'll be nice. And it is an overdrive, which I kind of expected it was. It's an ESO, so that's good. All right, let me get to work. Okay, so you see what I've done here. I just take a little spray paint. I spray around all the things I'm moving. So it's not uncommon to be multiple sets of holes near each other, uh, pretty close to the same. This here's a good example. If I wasn't paying attention and I started using this as my reference for the rear, I'd, it would get off pretty quick up front. So I just... Uh, spray paint where they were that way I know what where I should be and uh, there's a real nice easy way to do this drilling uh, so in this let's see I'm taking out a hundred and hundred and some odd inches and I don't recall what that is right now but what I'll do is take a piece of EMT which is electrical conduit all right and I'll get three-quarter EMT and I will cut it long enough that it will reach from here and I can put, take this bolt out and take the end of the conduit and I'll smash it and I'll run that bolt through it and put the nut on Okay, it's still enough bolt because I smashed the conduit that it, it will go into this hole and then I take the other end up here and I'll smash that end and I'll weld in a bolt but I'll grind the bolt to a point first so it'll have a scribe and then when I put it in there I'll have my wife hold it in that hole I'll come up here and I'll scribe it up and down just a little bit for each hole and I'll do one for this size bolt actually that's the only size I need because the bump stops are the same size and then no matter what I do once I take this loose all I have to do is put that bolt in my template or my guide, whatever you want to call it, in each one of these holes, and it will transfer that mark perfectly in this area. And then, there's several ways you can do this. Now, what I've done before is I've made a template where it hangs over the edge of this, and I have holes in it for all the hangers for every piece, and then I just hang it over. Now, a simpler way if you don't mind doing it this way is to hang your tape measure on the lip hair of this one measure over and see what you need for each one of these holes starting at the top and say this one oh, let's just show you what I mean it's probably easier this tape measure is a little too thick but you'll get the point come around this way and I would hold the top from moving but I can't do it because this one's too thick but anyways, hold it down, and that would give us each one of our measurements, okay? And then get that one, and then the next one, 
and the next one. And then just come up front and do the same thing. Hang it on the edge, bring it down, so on and so forth. The up and down is less critical than the forward to back. It's still important, but the front to back is the best. And being on this one, if I do what I'm telling you about, where I'm not going to use, where I'm not going to change the drive shaft, if I just use this one, because there's already a slip yoke in it, we got to have a slip yoke. So if I use this drive shaft and just move it all forward, I can use this hole for the lead of the front leaf spring bracket, and this would be the back of the front leaf spring bracket on both sides. So that's where I'm at. But uh, I need to uh, I need to go look at a couple things because uh, I'm not I'm just not convinced I need to use this truck. But at the same time, I think I've got a better choice. I have another truck, so um, let me show you that. Okay, so this is the other truck I have. This one is a 2007. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 25.5. Now, the frame itself, the thickness of the flange, and the height of the frame is the same. Um, all right. What's nice about this, this is a 2007. It has 104,000 miles on it. So uh, that part is pretty attractive. The body's in good shape. As you can see, the doors aren't all beat up. There's no rust. The interior's nice. I'll show you the interior here. Now, it's got some parts in it because um, the engine uh, needs work. And I don't want this engine anyways. But uh, I could put the DT-466 in this one and the six-speed manual. Do away with this. Add a clutch pedal and, um, you know, have a pretty nice truck. Put the air ride seats in, put air brakes, change the front axle, change the rear axle, cut the frame down. See where I'm going with this? It's a much nicer truck, but to get it to where I want it, it's just way too much work. Um, the tires are good on the other truck. This has a really, really nice hood and grill. missing this quarter fender but I do have that the steps are in good shape the battery box in really nice shape um, frames good it is hydraulic brakes you know so like I said it's it's a lot of work but uh, I'm just not certain which way I want to go now um, so I guess I'm just gonna have to think about it because I, the whole reason doing this I need a I need a temporary dump truck I don't need the permanent one. I don't need. I don't need uh, the forever dump truck, you know. But the frame is really nice. Of course, there's a couple Super Duty beds I've got. Those are 2016 takeoffs. Um, anyways, so you know this one's spring suspension like the other one. It's got uh, gears pretty high in this one, but it doesn't matter because I. I would like to have air brakes instead of this, but you see how clean the frame is, you know? And that's kind of where I'm going, is I would, I'd use this for the frame. Not so much the, the, uh, the cab or the hood or any of that, even though this is a very, very clean truck. Plus, it's five years newer, so the value of this as a dump truck would be, uh, a lot more than the other one. But, uh, you know, it's like everything else. Uh, it's it is the is the juice worth the squeeze as I like to say you know this is a a much nicer truck in itself um, much better shape everything's here I'd have to paint that bumper to make it really nice but uh, you know still could be a really nice dump truck but anyways I'll think on that while I do I'm gonna leave you so project dump truck um, I'm going to leave you that. If you guys like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and uh, leave your comments down below.